Assalamualaikum guys and welcome back to another video. It's Ibrahim Muslim and today I'm back with another video on the series of learning Go Configurator and comparing it with Clever Configurator. So in the previous video, I explained you ACPI, Booter and Device Properties and how all these different things work and how we can compare it with Clever Configurator. And in this video, I will tell you about Kernel, Miscellaneous and NVRAM. I will try to explain rest if the time permits. So let's start with Kernel. So kernel is kind of different in open code than what it was in clever configurator. In clever configurator, kernel have uh, different divisions and was distributed differently. So the first thing the kernel does is installing the text files. So in here we have our text installer. We give it a location. We tell it others and it search the different text available and it downloads it into the text folder of the clever configurator but this is available in kernel and in not text installer so here we tell different types of text which we have to install and we tell them how to load them and we tell the clever config or open code configurator where the config.plst file of each of the text is placed so in our case we just go there in browse and we go EFI, EFI, o, Clever, Open Core, Text, and we just select all them and they are added here. And then we can enable them, disable them, min kernel, we can give them limit of at which kernel you have to load, minimum and maximum and all other details. And one more important thing, which is kind of a hidden in Open Core and in the start, I was confused or you can say I missed it which is that if you go to the tools you find this text installer which is basically this section of global configurator opening in open core with a black theme nothing else is different it does basically the same stuff it gives you it installs the text in a different location but every other stuff is basically identical okay then we can just close this and you can install the text and it directly installs into the efi open core text folder okay we can block some of the drivers or some of the files we can add different patches here the list of patches is given with a description of what they do which is kind of a what is available text to patch and list of patches which is i don't know why it's empty it does not used to be okay the more the more important part of the kernel section in open core is these quirks and these quirks basically allow a lot of different stuff to happen on the hackintosh and it is very very important so we have a kind of a similar stuff in kernel and text patches in our open configurator but these patches are named differently and provide different facilities and provide some of the similar facilities on open core so first is apple cpu pm cfg log and apple xmcp log which is kind of equal to kernel cpu and lapic cpu kind of similar okay so these two are really important if you do not unlock the cfg of the motherboard itself so there is a different procedure to unlock the cfg at all from the bar from the motherboard itself and doing that is more stable and more secure and if you do not do that running mac os kind of harm or i don't know which hardware basically breaks but it says it's harmful for the hardware itself if you use these two quirks all the time and do not uh, hardcore or hardwire the patch itself into the motherboard and that patching is really really easy i will make a video on that until unless you do that you have to use these two to make your os boot otherwise it will give you a memory issue uh, I, I don't remember it properly, but it, it's kind of say allocating memory error, which is 0x1952 something something. So if you kind of have a similar error, you have to enable both of these. Otherwise, the system will not boot at all. Then you have to uh, take or check the power time out kernel panic. It is very important. If you do not have your CPU or if you do not have your uh, USB patched, with usb map or usb inject all and an sstd patch you have to use the xhci port limit this does not work on on all of the mac os versions especially it does not work on the latest versions but it do work on mojave and the early versions of catalina so and it is not a permanent fix okay this is disable rtc checksum which is also available here apple rtc and dummy power management which is basically 
kernel power management or dispatch AIPIC. These are kind of a similar stuff. And LAPIC kernel management is here, LAPIC kernel, kernel LAPIC and increase PCI bars, bar size. Okay, this disable mapper, disable LO mapper or IO mapper, this, this is basically and this is used when you do not disable virtualization from the BIOS or VTD from the motherboard. If you disable the VTD from motherboard, you can leave this unchecked. If your VTD is enabled in the motherboard, you have to check it. Otherwise the system will not boot. I will try to explain more stuff, but because I'm a human and I forget on the point when we are making the video, I will add the link in the description below in which you can study all this in quite detail, but I will give you a walkthrough. And in the end of this video series, by end I mean after five videos, this is the third part. Out of the five videos, you can kind of be able to make a proper bootable uh, open core EFI for your coffee lake and comet lake and basically the Skylake CPUs or motherboards. Okay, so these two, this and this, if the RTC is enabled, all of these I will add in the description below. In miscellaneous, we have to check, uh, these will be basically checked, but if they aren't, so you have to check show picker built in, in debug mode. In debug mode, if you're trying to install the macOS for the first time, a hack on torsion the first time, you have to enable Apple debug and Apple panic. This will give you quite more detail when the kernel panic occurs and it will give you a quite detailed uh, log of what error occurred and that log will be saved here. There will be a folder with system info and all the debug will be there. These two is good enough. The file will be created outside the EFI here. Okay, the target value has to be 67. Display value has to be this and display delay has to be zero. Boot protect should be none for starters, but for professionals, you can use bootstrap. Exposed sensitive data should be six, but for few extreme levels, you can add three. And some of the application wanted me to use three, so I was using three, but it is recommended to use six. Allow NVRAM reset and allow set default from the bootloader or the open core bootloader. Otherwise, you won't be able to uh, reset NVRAM or allow set default. And remember, uh, this is not like Clever Configurator. Here, NVRAM basically interacts with the motherboard's NVRAM. And what does motherboard NVRAM does? Motherboard NVRAM has the data about which a drive to boot first and which are the basic settings. What is the time? What is the date? What is the language of your motherboard BIOS or UFI? And which hard drive you boot from and which partition from the hard drive you boot from? So if, and some of the boot arguments, for example, if you add minus V, uh, and CPI of 2000, slide is equal to zero, dot is equal to zero. If you add all these boot arguments and then you delete the open core and then you try to boot Windows without open core, do those boot arguments will still remain there. So remember that. In security, you have to use none. Bootstrap can be used for the people with, which have like more experience with open core and it is to protect the system or the windows from not overhauling or deleting the EFI of the macOS. So this is used when, but in the startup, when you're trying to install macOS, do not use this. Once it's set up and everything is running, you can use this to uh, make it more stable and more secure and avoid any crashing. So this is this for, this is for the, for the miscellaneous. Then we go to NVRAM. So NVRAM is a very important part of open core configurator because this is where most of the boot arguments are added and most of different patches are added or different stuff is done. So this is basically the part which we used to know as boot in Clever Configurator. And here boot arguments are added. So in the start, I was kind of confused about what UUIDs here do. So this UUID is what is the boot argument UUID. So this is similar in all of the motherboard. It's not like just having a unique UUID here. I used to change the UUID and check what this UUID do. And I thought every Mac OS version or every OS itself have different UUID, but this is what uh, 
is the address or what you can say is unique ID for the motherboard in which it saves its boot arguments. In this UID, all of the startup functions which a BIOS or a motherboard does is applied. So if we add minus V, that will be saved here and the NVRAM will take that command to the Mac OS and the Mac OS will understand it. So here in this 7C436110 UUID, we will add our few of the startup uh, boot arguments. So this section in the boot arg adds the boot arguments here. This is for the language. You have to accurately name this, this, and this. You can also do, for boot arguments, I was adding all of the boot arguments uh, manually, but I didn't knew in start that if you right click here, it will show you all the boot arguments, which we used to get here by clicking, by right clicking. So this and this is kind of a similar. This is the system audio volume for audio DXC, not for the your startup or your macOS volume. For this is for audio DXC. It was meant to be 46 on all the different guides. I didn't change it. I didn't check it. So it's better you go with a 46 right now. Slide zero is letting the kernel know, letting the system know where to place the kernel. Slide zero is kind of provides stability and security and avoids random uh, boot errors. In few system, you never know when the boot error is going to occur. If you use, I might be speaking too fast. Like sometimes one system is quite stable and it boots 10 times without an issue. But on the 11th time, it gives you an error, a nullified error uh, comes up instead of Apple logo. And then if you restart, it went away and never comes back till one week or two weeks. And then you, you, you're kind of confused what's the issue. So slide zero is the main uh, thing which can recover or cure that problem. Slide zero basically tells where the kernel has to be placed. Slide, slide value are different for all motherboards and there is a complete different tutorial on how to select your slide value for best performance. But as a, on a generic level, slide zero works for most of the people. Then there is ALC ID, which is basically Apple Audio ALC. And if we go here, we have to go to the devices. And here we inject our Apple ID, which we used to be 11 for ALC and stuff. 11, 3, 5, 7. But right now I'm using one, which is for 1200 series of Apple ALC. This AGD P mode is equal to Pakira is basically for my X uh, 5700 XT. This has to be used for all of the Navi G based GPUs. If you don't use them, if you don't use this, macOS will have a black screen after the Apple logo is done with loading. Minus V is for verbose. It gives you all the details that show up when you boot like a command line and all the lines go. This is very important for debugging and you can see what where and when which stuff is loaded which isn't and where the system crashes and all that issue okay the last one is for telling the language boot up language for the open core there can be english uh, japanese chinese or a lot of different languages so this is done for this video guys and i hope you liked the video if you did give it a thumbs up share it to your friends and family who want to make a hack and who want to learn about mac OS. Or open core itself, open core is useful for booting Windows, Linux, and Mac OS and different versions of your Linux. So that's all for this video, guys. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any question, query, let me know in the comment section below. If you want my further help, you can contact me on Patreon and I will try to upload different folders, files on Patreon. And my Patreon subscription starts from just $1 a month. There are different packages for different support and it keeps me going. It helps me get my stuff done and it financed me to buy new hardware to test hack and touch so that's all for this video guys once again thank you so much and until the very next video please take care allah hafiz